Hello. The Soil Vision and Soils program is useful for the estimation of the unsaturated hydraulic properties of a soil. Those consist specifically of the grain size distribution, the soil water characteristic curve, and the hydraulic connectivity, as well as using different types of approaches within the Soil Vision and Soils program. To begin with, I will click this button for Soil Vision and Soils. From there, we'll be greeted with the Soil Vision and Soils Manager. It is also useful to note that when we open the Soil Vision and Soils Manager, we can cross-check the program with the tutorial manual by going to Help, Soil Vision and Soils Tutorial Manual, to start with, I'm going to start a new project to demonstrate the capacity of this program. The Soil Vision Soils program contains the database of various different soil types that will be useful for your projects. To illustrate, I'm going to go to NCHRP Arizona dataset. When I click on that, I'll be greeted with a variety and plethora of different soil types inside that database. This window will tell us the material name, the date it was sampled, the unit system, be that metric or imperial, and the classification. The classification can vary from USDS to AASHTO to different types of classifications, as well as the texture. In this case, let's create a new project. I'm going to go to Project, and then Add One Project. I'm going to select where I want to go. In this case, it will be the Documents folder. Then I will give it a description and project name. In this case, it will be U-S-A-C-E Training. The description will be Soil Vision Soils Demo. And for the company, I will give it a fictitious name. Once that is done, I will hit OK. It will say the project has been created successfully. From there, I can see my new project in the Documents folder. And then from there, I can add a new material. We will call this material Silt. We'll give it today as the sample date, and then we'll use a USTS classification system, which is probably the most common one, in metric units, so meters, newtons, etc. Here we need to specify the specific gravity of the soil. Commonly it's um, around 2.65. Denser soils can have higher values. And then from tabs, we can also give it descriptions. So I'm just going to give it a, a random description here. Um, sample soil for Flaxus LE, soil vision soils. On 11, 15, 21. We can specify a station. So if we had a station, we could determine that here and give the specific information for that station. And then if we had a paper that used this material, we can give that in metadata inside the Publisher tab. Here I'll click OK. And then I'll be greeted with this new window. I see this pop-up menu with all the possibilities that I have to obtain different types of parameters for the soil, basically right here. And our intention is to enter and fit existing grain size information. So if I click on one of these buttons, I can begin to define the soil. 
To begin with, I'll click grain size. Once I click on this button, I'll be greeted to this window. This is where we define our grain size distribution of the soil. Because in this example, we're assuming that we've run some kind of sieve test and we know the grain size distribution of the soil, we will click measured. The calculation method is how we relate the actual physical data to the data that the program interpolates through a fitting function. In this case, we'll use a unimodal calculation method. I, in this window, I will want to paste the sieve test that I've run in my lab into this uh, Plaxis LE manager uh, grain size window. I'll click paste. And this is just a simple um, grain size distribution of a soil that we are defining here. It simply relates the particle diameter and the percent passing. I can see that my grain size distribution has been entered correctly by clicking on this button here and seeing that the particle size and the percent facing relate accurately to what the sieve test has calculated. You can see that this bloom line has given a unimodal curve fit to the provided data inside the program. This unimodal uh, calculation will be used um, in the program to determine the grain size distribution. I can also have a higher resolution of the graph here by increasing its size. When I make it bigger, by dragging it, I can see glitter clarity in the particle size and percent passing curve. When I exit it, once that's done, I'll hit OK. There are different tabs that also relate the different calculation uh, parameters that the program will use to fit the curve to the actual um, pasted data. And this, these values tell you the unimodal fit parameters of that curve fitting. The USCS percentages will automatically be calculated. So from this tab, we can directly go use our USCS classification system and give it a USCS designation. In this case, it will probably be um, a plastic silt or something of that nature. Or a well-graded silt. Um, we can also see the diameters as well. The statistics and the general information. And we can specify um, the the lab name, the lab location, and any other descriptive information we want to assign this grain size distribution. So once that is done, and I'm satisfied with the grain size distribution that I've input into the program, I can hit OK. And now that part of the picture of the soil has been defined. Now I want to estimate the soil water characteristic curve. To do that, I'll click on this button. To define the soil water characteristic curve, I need to define the saturated water content and the specific gravity. I can also hit this button here, and that will give me information relating to the soil mass information specifically porosity, void ratio, dry density, degree of saturation, and other parameters that define the, um, the soil water characteristic curve of the soil mass. We should have some information before we um, begin to define um, a new soil project. We should have some information on these basic soil properties. I'll hit OK. Once I've inputted the ground uh, water content and specific gravity, I will need to define the uh, uh, soil water characteristic curve.
that source, I will select laboratory data. And then it will ask me to include the information. So here I will pick my selection. On the left side, we'll get um, a cell that asks me what the suction is. So what are the calculatory forces for a given water content value? Here, I will need to have some information relating to the soil I'm working with. So I'll need to have some information if I'm putting in data that relates the groundwater content to the suction experienced by the soil. In this example, I will assume that I have information relating the magnitude of capillary suction to the groundwater content. I'll place, paste that information into the program. Here we can see the magnitude of suction in metric units of kilopascals to the groundwater content. I could also show a graph and apply a fit. We can see here we have a soil suction curve that relates the data points Okay, so once I've defined the grain size and the soil water characteristic curve, I will now go to have a hydraulic conductivity. Here, we'll we need to input the void ratio and the porosity of the soil, as well as the saturated hydraulic conductivity in if that value is constant. In this example, I'm going to use a method to define the saturated hydraulic connectivity, but I have other methods available to estimating hydraulic connectivity. Now that I've defined the grain size distribution, the soil water characteristic curve, it is now time for me to define the hydraulic connectivity. To do that, I will go to the hydraulic connectivity button. From there, a pop-up will show, um, and then I'm given a list of parameters I need uh, that need to be defined. Um, the void ratio input should have already been defined through the grain size tab, so that value is already listed, um, and the porosity is determined um, through the soil, um, but we can change this if we feel the need to. Um, for the saturated hydraulic connectivity, we have a list of options here. Um, it's important to note that a constant value is uh, a measured value, usually from the lab, while others are based on grain size distribution um, information. Uh, for this example, we'll be using uh, Hazen's KSAT. Um, for the Hazen constant, I will use a value of 3. Doing that um, will yield a constant KSAT value of 9.8624 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, meters uh, per second. And this would be over the saturated uh, phase. Um, for the unsaturated um, phase state, we will need to define a hydraulic connectivity function. And this would be drawn from the soil water characteristic curve. So here I will, as before, go into um, this definition. Once those values are defined, I can save my soil. And now I have defined a new soil database using Solar Vision Soils inside Plaxis LE. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.